All right, guys, welcome back to the office of the F-15E Strike Eagle. And today we're going to be going over how to engage a moving target that is driving across the ground using the GMT modes of our air-to-ground radar here in the F-15E, and how to hand that target off to your targeting pod to then attack that target visually using the IR sensors of our lantern targeting pod and the laser to guide an LGB right on into it. Now, if you recall, or if you've flown the F-A-18 or F-16, you can do this exact same procedure in those two aircraft. However, in the F-15E, it is a little bit more of a manual process. It's not quite as automated, and I'll show why in just a few moments here. So let's set up our aircraft real quick. Master mode arm, we'll go to air to ground master mode. We'll set up our program one for dropping all eight of our GBU-12s will set for an auto-release ripple single nose and tail for our fusing. We'll come on over to our air-to-ground radar page, and we'll bring up our targeting pod page over here on our right MPD. We'll box EXP or expand up here in the top right so that way we get a little bit of extra zoom from our lantern targeting pod. We'll take command of our air-to-ground radar by going castle switch left long, so that's a press of one second or longer. Now, in RBM mode for the air-to-ground radar, we can do an interleaved GMT mode. However, I find that this isn't the best way to actually start queuing your targeting pod onto a moving target on the ground. It's great for situational awareness as to where a moving target might be on the ground closer to geological figure, uh, features like a lake or a city or mountains, things like that. But the update time is slow enough because it's interleaved that I like to just go ahead and go to a full GMT mode here. We'll push the display range out to 40 nautical miles, and we're about 40 nautical miles from our waypoint. I find that GMT, or ground moving targets, the actual little tracks start to pop up right at around 38 nautical miles at their farthest, and we should start to get some updates here. I typically like to leave my radar display in full mode as opposed to half or quarter. It allows me to be a little bit more accurate when I'm moving my cursor around the page to cue my targeting pod directly onto the right spot, first time, every time. But your mileage may vary for that, and you might find something that's a little bit more comfortable and easier for you. Now, biggest thing here is we need to update what our cursor is actually going to do. Right now, it's in map mode, where we'll make an HRM map uh, if we hit TDC to press underneath our cursor there. So we'll bring it over. You can create a target on top of the contact. However, I find it's easier to just cue the targeting pod right to that point and then update and create a target point via the targeting pod visually on top of our moving vehicles that we'll find. So we're starting to see this little plus sign here, which is our radar contact for those moving vehicles. So why don't we take a look at the F-10 map and take a look at those vehicles in question. So on the highway, just south of Lake Al-Assad, here on the Syria map, we've got a little column of vehicles here with a ZSU-23, so a Shilka up front, a couple of Scuds, and some trucks in the back here. Why don't we go ahead and take a look at them, just because it's kind of cool. The Syria map is just so detailed and beautiful, it's kind of awesome. And we can see they're not really moving all that fast, so the GMT modes in the F-15E are quite sensitive. So going back to the actual tutorial part here, we'll just move our throttle designator controller cursor right over the top of our plus sign, or as close as we possibly can, and we'll hit TDC to press. That will automatically cue our targeting pod right to the point on the ground that we want to set. Now please keep in mind here, guys, that we are not actually locking up that ground moving target like you would be doing in the F-16 or the F-A-18. We're just simply putting the target pod somewhere on the ground, sort of close to where those targets are supposed to be. So at this point, 
we're kind of in a situation where the, the GMT mode of the air-to-ground radar and the air-to-ground radar as a whole are kind of no longer of use to us. We have the targeting pod queued to a point on the ground that's close enough to those column of moving vehicles that we can start to search for them visually. Now, if we lose our situational awareness and we just have no idea where they are, we can separate out away from the target a little bit, give ourselves some more standoff distance, and then try to reacquire those targets via our uh, GMT mode of our air-to-ground radar, and then requeue the targeting pod, hopefully to maybe a better spot on the ground to pick up those targets visually. So let's go ahead and go castle switch right long in order to take command of our targeting pod. We'll zoom in the pod, and boop, right there, there's our column of vehicles. We've got our Shilka up front, our Scuds in the middle, and our trucks in the back. Pretty simple there. So now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to box C des or continuous designation. What continuous designation does for us is every time the pod is actually slewed across the ground, what it's going to do for us is it's going to drag our target designation point with it across the ground, very similar to the way some of the other jets in DCS world work, which is very nice. But however, you do have to ensure that you do box CDES up here in the top left. Now, one limitation of the lantern targeting pod or the ANAAQ 14 lantern target targeting pod is the fact that it doesn't have the best capabilities in the world. It's not a light lightning pod. It's not a sniper pod. It's pretty old technology at this point. So you're going to get pretty darn close to your target before you can actually get the pod to latch on to one of those targets down there and start to track it automatically. So don't panic if you're like, oh man, it's not tracking the target, it's not tracking the target, it's not tracking the target. As you get closer and closer and closer to your release, just keep following the target by moving your TDC across the ground, following those trucks as they're driving, and then eventually it'll snap to it. Now we want to, of course, make sure that we have PTRK option for point track box down here in the bottom right. If you're within black hot mode, so if you change it over to black hot mode, ensure to also change this option down here for a black point, or it will not track those points. In black point track, it is going to be searching for black dots for those vehicles. If you're in white hot mode, we need to switch it back over to white point track. The APT is for automatically selecting the best contrast. However, I find that it's much, much easier to have it set correctly for whether white hot or black hot mode. So we'll go ahead and rebox continuous des, point track mode. We'll kick off the autopilot. We'll hit TDC depress to actually create a target point down there. And that'll give us an ASL or asthma steering line to give us some steering direction here. And let's go ahead and demonstrate continuous designation. So if we move the pod, we can see it moving in the HUD there. It, see how it drags our target point around with it? That's what we want, especially when we're tracking moving targets to drop a bomb on it, because that's going to allow us to have the best possible chance of having the most accurate drop to actually get the bomb within the laser basket as those targets are moving across the ground especially important if you're trying to track, say, a faster moving target, like maybe a civilian car that's being used as a car bomb and we have to hit it before it gets to a friendly base or something of that nature. So let's go ahead and swap it over to point track. And we're going to hit auto acquisition switch to press in order for it to start to attempt a lock on. Sometimes you kind of have to play with it, a little bit of troubleshooting here. And as you get closer, it should start to... Yep, there we go. And we now have it locked onto a Scud. Honestly, doing this tutorial here with you guys live, uh, this is the furthest out I've ever been able to get the Lantern Targeting Pod to lock onto a target. Usually, I'm more within about 15 seconds to release of my LGB. So we got lucky today. I guess it wanted to really go for those Scuds down there. Also, the larger the vehicle, which means the bigger the dot for a bigger contrast between the colors 
on the targeting pod's display, the easier time it's going to have actually tracking the target. So if, say, you had, say, like a giant uh, IL-76 taxiing very slowly across the uh, runway or a taxiway, they'll be able to get it in point track a lot easier than, say, a little Jeep that's running down the highway because it's such a small dot, the pod's going to have a harder time finding that bit of contrast to lock onto. So let's go ahead and continue on here. And because we're in continuous designation mode, or CDES, it is going to be dragging our target point across the ground, giving us that really, really accurate drop of our LGB to get it right in that laser basket and impact the target. Now, typically, we want to have a delay for our automatic laser firing. However, I'm going for ALAS continuous today because of the fact that these targets are moving, I want the bomb to start maneuvering towards the targets as early as possible. So we'll press our pickle button and weapons away, lasers automatically firing. I think our jet's gonna be okay. And here's our bomb falling down on those scud units down there. Hopefully she's in the laser. There she goes. Now she's tracking using that bang bang guidance. Let's check our jet here. Everything's looking good. And kaboom. Got him. That's definitely a shack. And guys, that is how you hand off a ground moving target from the air to ground radar of your F-15E Strike Eagle over to your targeting pod to then engage it visually with a targeting pod and guide a laser guided bomb into it. It's a bit more of a manual process in the F-15E than it is in the single seat jets that we have in DCS like the JF-17 or the F-A-18 or the F-16. But the good thing is we always have a friend in our backseat to help us out, or I guess usually we do. <laughs> so uh, I hope you guys liked the video. I really do hope it helps you out here. And uh, please like and subscribe. The DCS World content the creation community is definitely getting throttled by the YouTube algorithm. So those likes and those comments on the videos definitely, definitely help out. Make sure to check your subscriptions to ensure you're still subscribed to your favorite content creators. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate your viewership and uh, hope this helps you out in return. So fly safe out there, guys, and we'll see you in the next one.